Well, it's a pleasure to welcome our friends at the two. We've been calling you the two theater campuses. Let's do that right now. <laughs> and and a, a couple things occur to me about one of our theater campuses. You folks at the mall, one of you asked me this week how many trucks it would take to move all those recliners to Ponderosa, to Miracle Mile. I, you need to check with Regal before you do that, just saying. Um, and we're going to have to call you something besides the mall campus. So we want to welcome the people also to, from the soon-to-be Miracle Mile campus as well. Um, we get past Thanksgiving and start heading for Christmas, and I associate uh, that time leading up to Christmas with a thing I would do as a high school kid, I remember. It was a black and white movie made in 1954 called White Christmas. Anybody remember that? And uh, in, that, in that movie was a duet between Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney. And I'm not going to inflict myself on you too much, just a couple lines from the song. When I'm worried and I can't sleep, I count my blessings instead of sheep. And I fall asleep. Join me now. Counting my blessings. Give yourselves a hand. That was great. All right. Well, we're talking together uh, about Thanksgiving. Even though this is uh, normally in church, we talk about Thanksgiving the week before. Um, I don't want to lose Thanksgiving just yet. But uh, in the context of our 2020 vision, Better Together, we have much to be thankful for. And I can't give you a final amount because you haven't all had a chance yet to complete those commitment cards. Come back next week, uh, December 2nd. I look forward to sharing with you wonderful results from our, our vision, our 2020 Vision Better Together campaign. But we're continuing on this journey from here to there. And as we think about there, I hope an aspect of where we are is that thankfulness that uh, is so much important so important for us. Um, I'd like to talk about not being thanksgetters, but being thanksgivers, if you will. And to do that, the scripture passage that I'm basing this on today is Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. And I have it before you. If you haven't discovered your notes, uh, I encourage you to follow along. And I, I put it into two separate segments, if you will. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were cleansed. Uh, to stop there for a minute. Now, this time Jesus is walking on the border between uh, Samaria and Galilee. Uh, there's a time in another gospel, John chapter 4, it says he had to go through Samaria. So in that case, he went through Samaria. This time, he's kind of walking right on the edge there. Maybe he had a divine mission to be right there. It's interesting that there's uh, 10 men who have leprosy. Who counted 10? You think Jesus went 1, 2, 3, 4? I wonder how they knew there were 10. And then we learned that, uh, that one of the men was a, a Samaritan. And, and a, not a Jewish person, but a Samaritan, the other side of the border, I have a feeling that when leprosy afflicted somebody, they didn't worry so much about who was a Samaritan and who was a Jew because it was the, the misfortune of the disease that they faced. So uh, they call out to Jesus and they have to yell because at least at one place I read, you had to be, uh, you had to, a, a leper had to stay at least 150 feet, 50 yards away from clean people. I'm unclean. I'm unclean. They weren't allowed to get any closer. It was contagious. They didn't know exactly how it happened. But unclean, unclean. Jesus, have pity on us. And they had to call from a long ways away. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And Jesus doesn't make a big deal of it. He says, just go to the priests. You know? Go to the temple, to the Jewish priests. They have a way to diagnose whether you're cleansed or not. And he just kind of dis seemed like almost dismissive. Uh, just go to the priest. And so they went, and it says, as they went, they were cleansed. Now, this is written by Luke, Dr. Luke. He was the physician. Um, 
he uses a couple different words for their healing. They were cleansed, it says there. Now, picking up the story again, uh, one of the ten, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner, this Samaritan? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The, the Samaritan was the one that bothered to go back and say thank you. I, I praise you, God. I, I praise God in a loud voice. He's so excited to be healed. The other nine go on their way. Um, I, I talk about the story of ten lepers and one leaper, and I'm influenced by that. It doesn't really say that this man leaped, but I think he might have. Uh, I'm influenced by a story of another healing that Peter and John had a part in. Peter and John, Jesus' disciples, so shortly after Jesus has been crucified and raised again and the power of the Spirit has come on the early church, Acts chapter 3, it says, One day Peter and John were going to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now there was a man, lame from birth, who was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where the man was put every day to to beg from those going to the temple courts. He wasn't looking for healing. He was looking for money. He wanted a handout. When this man saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at the man, as did John. Uh, Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Peter said, we don't have any silver or gold, but what we do have we give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking the man by the right hand, Peter helped him up. Instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. So I, I thought about that leaping aspect of this man in Acts chapter 3. And I had to think this guy was so excited. He's praising God in a loud voice. Look what God has done for me. And he, he thanks Jesus for that. And what's Jesus' reaction? Rise and go, your faith has made you well. Now earlier, uh, Luke used the word for cleansed, cleansed from leprosy. Uh, in this case, your faith has made you well. That's a different word in the New Testament. Um, and it refers to spiritual wholeness, to salvation. Salvation has come to you. Yeah, those other nine might have been healed and that they were cleansed from leprosy. But this man, as he gave thanks to God, uh, spiritual wholeness and salvation has come, let alone not the Jewish person, but to the foreigner, to the Samaritan. Um, I'm remembering uh, something that I, I read a while ago about a hospital chaplain that did his own little informal survey. Uh, he, over the, a lifetime, as a career in the, in the, ch in the hospital, knew of 2,000 patients that he had interacted with who apparently were dying. And they had shown, when they showed signs of repentance, uh, many of them, 2,000 of them, were restored to health. But the chaplain said only two of the 2,000 uh, showed life-changing uh, spiritual life because of that. You know, uh, 2,000, only two thanked God and their life was changed. The others just accepted and went on their way and lived the same old way. Do you relate to that? Do you see how that can happen? You know, God intervenes and blesses us and we don't bother to say thank you. We don't go back and praise God and have a, a, a different life because of it. Um, I talked with somebody this week at the uh, Miracle Mile campus, as I'm starting to call it. And uh, this man had a, his wife a couple of summers ago was very sick. And he told me, Bill, I just got to tell you, uh, I don't want to be guilty. He didn't know what I was going to talk about this weekend. I said, thanks, Doug, you're helping me with my sermon. But he said, I just feel like I want to give back to God. I want to praise God for the way he worked in my wife's life. I think you guys at the mall campus, soon to be Miracle Mile, know who I'm talking about. But isn't that a healthy thing to see when somebody's life is changed? And uh, So I'd like to lift that up to be a thanks giver and not just a thanks getter. Um, the truth is, letter A, most people, most of, many of us, focus more on what God gives them than what they can give God. Um, 
this week, Thanksgiving, uh, Black Friday now encroaches on Thursday, you know, and it starts early in the week, if not on Thursday, earlier than that. And so we just saw Black Friday go by. And then yesterday was Small Business Saturday. And tomorrow is Cyber Monday, when you can go online and get, to get all your deals. Did you know that Tuesday has been declared to be Giving Tuesday? That it's International Giving Tuesday. It goes back to the year 2012. I've just been starting to hear about it recently. But it's a healthy thing. It's not getting, but giving. How can you give instead of just get? I would like to suggest to you, think about Giving Tuesday this week. But today is the 25th of November. I'd like us to go from now till December 25th, Christmas Day, and make this giving month. Shall we do that? And the time between now and Christmas, let's give back to God. Let's not be so focused on, on getting as we are on giving. A few practical ways that we can do that. Uh, in a couple of Fridays, uh, the 7th of December, we have uh, Village Christmas in Watkins Glen. And we're going to be outdoors in front of Ben and Jerry's, not giving away ice cream, but hot chocolate and hot cider and donuts. And it's not the food or the drink so much as it is the, the love of God that we want to give the people that go by. And then the next day is Hope of Christmas in Elmira at Wisner Park. And again, we want to make Jesus famous as we go uh, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder with Christians from a lot of other churches as well. And then, by the way... Uh, I understand that we filled all the slots for Christmas sharing. And so we have an opportunity. Don't forget the 9th. Sunday the 9th is when you're supposed to have your gifts back in so that they can be distributed before Christmas. And then the next weekend, Faith Builders uh, are doing their Christmas program at all of our campuses, uh, the 15th and the 16th. Now I say that don't just come and sit back and watch the kids, but give an invitation Remember Fran, friends, relatives, associates, neighbors? Let's reach out and give somebody. You know, they tell me that a lot of people would go to church if only somebody would invite them. They, they're watching you. They know you go to church. How come they never invite me? Well, here's an opportunity. Hey, come see our children's program. Or the next weekend, uh, the, t the 23rd and then the 24th, Sunday night, Christmas Eve Eve in Watkins, we have an opportunity uh, 7 o'clock, to invite people to be part of that Christmas Eve Eve service. And then on the 24th at Pine City Campus, uh, that afternoon at 3 o'clock, and then again at 7 in the evening, we have Christmas Eve candlelight services. And we hope that you'll be inviting and be uh, giving. That's an aspect of giving, is just to give that invitation. Uh, and then, by the way, coming up sometime, we're not sure exactly when, when in January, uh, the mall folks are going to be moving to Miracle mile and we want to help them you know we want to help them in that moving process new year's day keep your don't stay up too late the night before but new year's day we're, we're going to have a moving party and if you especially if you have a truck we'd like to have you help us move everything to our new location and we hope that we'll have a certificate certificate of occupancy soon when we get there um, so first of all um, don't just focus on what god gives you but what you can give god and then uh, become a better thanksgiver. Um, thanksgiving, thanks living, uh, to, to be willing to, to share. You know, I have on my, my phone uh, an app that was provided for me from the health insurance. You know, and if I discovered that if I do a couple little clicks every morning, I wake up around 4.30. And before I get out of bed, I do the little app thing. Because every month or two, I get 15 bucks from the health insurance. So that motivates me to do that. Uh, the first thing it asks every day, um, the first healthy habit is to park far, far away in the parking lot. Did you park furthest away in your parking lots today? And I click yes. And so that gives me a little credit. The second one, it says, did you appreciate others in the last day? So isn't that interesting? The first one has to do with your physical conditioning, steps, taking more steps. The second one is, have you appreciated others? I, I, th I think they're onto something there. So, so we're called to appreciate others, and especially to develop a full appreciation of Jesus Christ. First um, Corinthians five fifty seven. Would you say that with me? But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we we thank. 
God for the victory we have in Jesus Christ. We appreciate Jesus Christ. Uh, Letter B, discover an irrepressible attitude of gratitude. Um, I debated which, which word to use. Irrepressible is what I came up with. I started to say incurable attitude of gratitude or insatiable or unstoppable. But to have that attitude of gratitude that transcends having a pity party or poor me, you know. Um, Gail reminded me that it was Arthur Ashe who, uh, when he developed uh, HIV, AIDS, when it was this beginning to become known, and it was through no questionable conduct on his part. He just ended up with AIDS. And he said, you know, somebody asked me, well, do you ever ask the question, why me? And he said, why not me? You know, and to have that uh, appreciation that you're going to thank God anyway. Our memory verse this week is 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Would you read that with me? Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And what's the address of that verse? 1 Thessalonians 5.18. That does not apply just to Thanksgiving Day, but every day. Notice that it doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances. There are certain things that you really can't be thankful for, but be th- give thanks in all circumstances. I was reminded uh, this week, uh, a, a hymn that we're going to sing Sunday morning in Pine City with the organ is a, an old classic from 16, it was written in 1636. Imagine that, almost 400 years ago. And the title of the hymn is Now Thank We All Our God. And the, the first verse is, Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Now the backstory to that hymn was, it was written by Pastor Martin Rinkert, and he lived in the time of the Thirty Years' War in Europe. And I, I just did a little research about that. Um, Germany was caught in a civil war between the Protestants and the Catholics. And then the other surrounding nations were kind of opportunistic, and they got involved because they were hoping to take over Germany. Uh, The bottom line was eventually after 30 years, France kind of won out and took over Germany for the next couple centuries. But this uh, Martin Rinkert was a pastor who, not just because of the war, but because of the results results of war, um, there was no food, starvation, Um, 8 million people died in Germany in those 30 years. Think of that. Half the population of Germany died. And this uh, Martin Rinkert was a pastor in a time when people were dying so frequently. He was caring, caring for the dying and trying to minister to their last needs. And at the worst of the time, he did as many as 50 funerals a day. Think of that. 50 funerals a day. And it was in that context that he wrote, Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices. To rejoice, to be thankful in all things, not for all things. And so uh, when you when you are questioning, Lord, why me? Why is this happening? Why not me? You know, how can I worship and thank God in the midst of this very difficult time? So uh, letter C, determine to give to God sacrificially. And we've said recently, what is a sacrifice for you might not be a sacrifice for somebody else or the other way around. Um, A statement that we've had during our our campaign, see if you can finish it, not equal giving, but. So we're called whatever that sacrifice would be for us. Psalm 50, verse 14, give an offering to show thanks to God. Give him what you promised. We still have people, I believe, that have said, yeah, I I know that campaign's going on and I meant to turn that card in, but I haven't yet. Or I wasn't there when they collected the cards. Not to worry, you still have a chance. We have the card available. It's not in your program this week, but it's available and backed. And we'd like you to be part of this. We don't want you to miss out because there's going to be great victory from this, not just financially, but spiritually, as you participate, as you uh, give an offering to show your thanks to God. 
Back, um, I mentioned before that in the book of Acts, we saw a capital campaign that Paul was leading for the, the Christians in Jerusalem. A thousand years before that, David led a capital campaign. Did you realize that? Uh, David knew that he was not going to be the one to build God's temple, that his son Solomon would. But David was the, chief, was the fundraiser in chief, if you will. And he, uh, he set the example for the people as they collected uh, capital gifts to build the temple. And he said this in 1 Chronicles 29, 14. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you. We have given you, God, only what comes from your hand. What an attitude. What we give is yours anyway, God. We just had it for a short time. We're giving back to you as an expression of worship. We're looking beyond us to the generation to come. David's looking beyond himself to the generation Solomon and to come after that, and he's investing in God's future, even though he won't be there to see it firsthand. Paul says in 2 Corinthians, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. A couple of weeks ago, we, Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There's a connection between your heart and your giving, and they're, they're tied right together. Um, I, a couple of weeks ago, I, I quoted from 2 Corinthians where Paul said, God loves a, a cheerful giver, a joyful giver. Um, the old King James, God loveth a cheerful giver. I decided at that point not to say the rest of this. It's kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing. God loveth a cheerful giver, but he accepteth from a grouch. <laughs> so sometimes you're grouchy before you're cheerful. And I did say, uh, sometimes you give till it hurts. And when you get through that, it feels good. But sometimes there's some pain. There's some sacrificing. I'm giving something up for God. But then it feels good after that. So I come back to the question that we've been asking for a few weeks. Uh, you have it there before you. Would you read it with me? Lord, what do you want to do through me to accomplish your will for PA UMC? There's a few of you that still need to fill out that, let's connect, that commitment card that uh, looks like this. Fill that card out. Put it in an envelope. You could put it in the basket today. Or if you get it to us by Thursday, this coming Thursday, it'll be included in the report next weekend. But we don't want you to miss out. If you've already filled out your, your commitment card uh, and you ask that question, what do you want to do through me, Lord, to accomplish your will? Maybe it's some other area where you need to get involved. You know, it's, it's not just your gifts, but it's your prayers and your service and your participation. Maybe it's your worship attendance on a regular, more regular basis. Um, we, we want you to ask God that and then listen for the answer. Okay? Amen? Let's pray. Lord, I think about those words uh, that we've sung regularly this fall. All the kingdoms built, all the trophies won, will crumble into dust when it's said and done. Because all that really matters that I live the truth to the ones I love? Was my life the proof that there is only one whose name will last forever? I don't want to leave a legacy. I don't care if they remember me. Only Jesus. I've only got one life to live. I'll let every second point to him. Only Jesus. Amen.